Hey boys and girls, it's Miss Lauber, and today we are working on our Lesson 7 problem set as well as our Lesson 7 exit ticket. And I want you to think back to what we were talking about in class today. We are working on the commutative property. And all that is, is just a fancy big word of saying that we take the numbers and we switch them around and then our total stays the same. So as you can see here in this example, we have four times three and then we have three times four. So we have the same numbers, three and four are the same and our total stays the same. So it's just a fancy way of saying that our factors switch places, but the total remains the same. And we are also working on drawing our arrays. And an array is just a way to arrange your picture or objects into equal rows. So you can see here that everything is all equal. And we don't have to be squares. It can be anything you want. Circles or smiley faces. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'll work over the first problem here for you all um, on your problem set. So it says, draw an array that shows six rows of two. So we know we're drawing an array and we know that we have to have six rows of two. So it tells you exactly what you need to draw. So we need six rows. So I have to have six rows. Remember rows go side to side. So I like to do one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Can you see that? Three, four, five, six. So I have my six rows, that's done, but I have to have two in every single row. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And you can see here that I have six rows of two, okay? So now it says to write a multiplication sentence where the first factor represents the number of rows. I'll make it a little bit neater here. Okay, so my first factor needs to represent the number of rows. All right, well, we already know that we have six rows, but just to be sure, I'm gonna go ahead and count. So I have one row, two, three, four, five, six. I have six rows. I use my six rows, and how many are in each row? One, two. So six times two, or six rows in two columns, six rows, in two columns equals how many spaces altogether? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So six times two equals twelve. Six rows of two equals twelve. Six rows times two columns is twelve spaces. Okay? So for question number two, you're going to draw the same, it's gonna give you the same kind of prompt. So you're gonna to have to draw two rows of six. So you're gonna draw your picture here, and then you will complete the multiplication sentence where the first factor represents the number of rows. So the first factor represents the number of rows. For question number three, it asks you to turn your paper to look at the arrays in problems one and two in different ways. So you would take your paper and actually flip it over and you look at the problem this way, look at the array, how it's different, and it says, what is the same and what is different about them? So you're gonna have to write me a sentence about what looks the same and different about your array for question one and your array for question two, okay? Part B says, why are the factors in your multiplication sentences in a different order, okay? So you might have to think about that. You're gonna take these two multiplication sentences and you're going to compare them. Notice what has changed in them. You're gonna write me a sentence here for that as well. For um, part, excuse me, for no, question number four, um, the first one is already done here for you. So it says six twos. So six times twos equals 12. So six rows, I'll draw a picture for you. One, two, three, four, five, six rows of two so I have six rows, and there's two in every row, equals 12. So I will go ahead and I'll do, let's do C. I'll do C with you guys. Seven times two equals what? So seven rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven rows, and you use that number of two, so two in every row, 
equals what? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So you would complete that for every single one of these um, parts. You might need to skip count to find the totals. You might have to draw a picture, whichever method works best for you. All right, on the back side, it says write and solve multiplication sentences where the second factor represents the size of the row. Okay, so you have to do a multiplication sentence for each picture. Oops. And the second number wants you to be the size of the row. So count one row, excuse me, so count one row and tell me that. So for an example, what, this is one row that has two. That number would go here. Okay, so I gave you a hint with that one. Question six says, Mrs. Nenadel writes, Two times seven equals seven times two on the board. Do you agree or disagree? Draw a raise to help explain your thinking. So you have two different problems here. You have seven, or two times seven, and then you have seven times two. So you're gonna have two different arrays. You're gonna have an array here for two times seven underneath this spot, and then you will have an array for seven times two. Once you draw your picture or your array, you are going to have to explain your thinking. Remember, explain means you have to write a sentence. Do you agree that these are the same or do you disagree that these are the same? You can say, these are the same because or these are the same, or these are not the same because. So are they the same or not the same? You're gonna have to explain that part here. For number seven, it says find the missing factor to make each equation true. So remember that we're doing the commutative property I'll show you my little picture here again. We're doing the commutative property, so all that means is our numbers are flip-flopping spaces. So we have four times three, and then now we have three times four, okay? So right here we have five times two, now we're gonna have two times five. We have the same numbers, just in different, in different spots. Okay, so you have to fill out the rest of the clouds by finding the missing factor or number. For the very last question, it says, Jada gets two new packs of erasers. Each pack has six erasers in it. So we have two and six as our numbers. That's the important information there. For part A, you will have to draw an array to show two and six, okay? And then for part B, you're going to write and solve a multiplication sentence. So once you draw your picture, your array, write the multiplication sentence that matches it. Okay? For part C, it says use the commutative property to write and solve a different multiplication sentence. So you're going to take part B and you're going to flip-flop the numbers. Okay? Remember, we just take the numbers and we flip them apart. We flip-flop them. Four times three, then we take them and now we flip them. Now three comes first. Three times four. So you're going to take this multiplication problem and you're going to flip-flop it. Your numbers will be flip-flopped here for part C. And moving on to our exit ticket, it's just one question today. It says, do you agree or disagree with this statement in the box? And the box says, 2 times 5 equals 5 times 2. You're going to have to draw your arrays and use skip counting to explain your thinking. So again, you would have two different pictures here. You have two different multiplication problems. So you have a, a picture here, and then a picture here, and then you're gonna have to write a sentence explaining these are the same because, or these are not the same because, okay? If you get stuck, remember that um, this question, which one is it? The exit ticket is very similar to question number six, okay? All right, boys and girls, that was a review of lesson seven with the commutative property, which is flip-flopping the numbers around but keeping the same answer or total and working on our arrays, which are making our pictures into equal rows. Hope this helps y'all. Bye.